O Theos, ilasti timi to marta lo, ke lei son me. O Theos, ilasti timi to marta lo, ke lei son me. Blessed is our God always, now and forever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before God our King. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain, he lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks in the wings of the wind, who makes his angel spirits his ministers of flame of fire, you who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever, you covered it with the deep as with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains, at your rebuke they fled, at the voice of your thunder they hastened away. You have, they went up over the mountains, they went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys, they flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them the birds of the heavens have their home, they sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his upper chambers, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man, all to make his face shine and bread which strengthens man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted, where the birds make their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees, the high hills are for the wild goats, the cliffs are refuge for the rock badgers. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and it is night in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works and wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions, this great wide scene which are innumerable teeming things, living things both small and great. The other ships sail about, there is that Leviathan which you have made to play there. These all wait for you that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. I'll sing to the Lord as long as I live. I'll sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and it is night. O Lord, how manifold are your works and wisdom. You have made them all. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to your God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Doxus your Theos. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God. O Lord, our hope, glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For the peace of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop Yerasimos, the honorable presbyters, the deacons in the service of Christ, and for all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For our country, the president, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our all holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Most holy Theotokos, save us. With all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For to you all glory and worship is befitting to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Please stand. Kyrie eke kraksa prohose, isaku sohon mu, isaku sohon mu, kyrie eke kraksa prohose, Isaku so ho 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 mu ho ho Proskes ti foni Ti his the his ho ho mu Endo ke krakene me Isaku so ho ho mu O Lord, Lord, who will be able to stand, for there is mercy with you. All creation was changed by fear, seeing you, O Christ, hanging on the cross. The sun was darkened, and the very foundations of the earth were shaken. All things suffered with the Creator of all things. O Lord, who willingly endured for us, glory to you. From the morning watch till night, from the morning watch, let Israel hope in the Lord. An impious and lawless people, why do they contrive in vain? Why did they condemn to death Allah Haif of all? Oh, wondrous marvel, that the creator of the world is delivered into the hands of the lawless, and the lover of mankind is lifted up on the cross that he might bring freedom to those bound in Hades who cry out, O long-suffering Lord, glory to you. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his sins. Today the all-pure virgin, seeing you, O word of God, hanging on the cross, was bitterly pierced in her heart, Bewailing from the depths of a mother's love and groaning from deep within her soul. She was exhausted by smiting her breast, tearing at her face and hair and crying out mournfully, Woe to me, my divine Son! Woe to me, light of the world! Why, O Lamb of God, have you faded from my eyes? Wherefore also the armies of the bodiless hosts seized with trembling cried out, O oh, incomprehensible Lord, glory to you. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people. Seeing you hanging on the cross, O Christ, the God and creator of all, whom as a virgin she bore, she cried out bitterly, O oh, my son, where has the beauty of your form vanished? I cannot bear to see you unjustly crucified. Hasten, therefore, and arise, 
that I too may behold your resurrection from the dead on the third day. For his mercy is strengthened over us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Today the master of creation stands before Pilate, and the creator of all is given up to the cross, led away as a lamb of his own volition. He is transfixed with his nails, his side is pierced, and his lips are touched with the sponge, who had reigned on Mahana. The Redeemer of the world is smitten on the cheek, and the Creator of all is mocked by his own servants. Oh, how great the Master's love! For his crucifiers he besought his own Father, saying, Father, forgive them this sin, for the lawless know what they unjustly are doing. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit. How could the lawless synagogue condemn to death the King of all creation without shame when he recalled the benefits which had, he had secured for them, saying, My people, what have I done to you? Have I not filled Judea with marvels? Have I not raised the dead with but a word? Have I not healed all manner of sickness and infirmity? How then do you repay me? How have you forgotten me? me? Instead of healing, you inflict unto me wounds. Instead of life, death, by hanging on the cross the benefactor as a malefactor, as lawless the lawgiver, as a criminal, the King of all, O forbearing Lord, glory to you, both now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. An awesome and marvelous mystery today is coming to pass. The invisible one is being held. The one freeing Adam from the curse is bound. He who tries the inner hearts and thoughts of man is, just, is unjustly he tried. He who sealed the abyss is shut up in prison. He stands before Pilate, before whom the powers of heaven stand with trembling. The fashioner is smitten by the hand of the fashioned. The judge of the living and the dead is condemned to the cross. The despoiler of Hades is shut up in a tomb. O forbearing Lord, compassionately enduring all things and saving all from the curse, glory to you. Sophia, or thee, O joyful light of holy glory, of the immortal heavenly, O holy, blessed Father, O Jesus Christ. And now that we have come to the setting of the sun, with all the light of eventide, we praise you, the Father, her Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. It is worthy at all times to praise you with voices of holy song. O Son of God, and giver of life, of life, the world does glorify, glory you. The evening prokimenon, they part 
parted my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. The emeri his sandotai matia mue aftis, ke pitoni matis mon mue valon clihiron. My God, my God, hear me, why have you forsaken me? They parted my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. The reading is from the book of Exodus. Wisdom, let us listen attentively. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man did not depart from the tent. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor in my sight. Now therefore I pray you, if I have found favor in your sight, show me now your ways that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And Moses said to him, If your presence will not go with me, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people? Is it not in your going with us so that we are distinct, I and your people? from all other people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken, I will do. For you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand upon the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my way my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. O Lord, judge those who wrong me. They rewarded me evil for good. The reading is from the book of Job. Wisdom, let us listen attentively. And the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she-donkeys. He also had seven sons, seven sons and three daughters, and he called the first, the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, and the name of the third Karen Hapuk. And in all the land there were no women so fair as Job's daughters. And their father gave them inheritance among their brothers. And after this Job lived 170 years. In total he lived 240, 270 years. In total he lived 240 years and saw his sons' sons and his sons' sons even four generations. And Job died an old man full of great, full of days. And it is written again, that the Lord will raise the, lo the one. It is interpreted from the Syrian book that he lived in the land of Osidus among the mountains of the Judumeas and Arabia. And he was called before with the name Jobab. Having received a woman, Arab an Arabian woman, he gives birth to a son whom he named Enon. He was the father of Zareb from uh, Isaf. In the aftos patros men zarek to Isav Yonios, mitros de fosoras oste in afton pemton nepo Avram. O Lord, O Lord, how marvelous is your name in all the earth, for your majesty is exalted above the heavens. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Wisdom, let us listen attentively. Behold, my servant shall understand, he shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. As many were astonished at him, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So shall he startle many nations, kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they shall see, and that which they have not heard they shall understand. Who has believed what we have heard, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or comeliness that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and was rejected by most men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. 
Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is dumb, so, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? And they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When he makes himself an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Sing, O barren, who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in travail, for the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Let us be attentive. They have laid me in the lower pit, in the dark places, in the shadow of death. O Lord, the God of my salvation, I have cried out to you day and night. Wisdom. The reading is from the epistle, first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians. Let us listen attentively. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Peace be unto you, the reader. And with your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Save me, O God, for troubles have come into my soul. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My soul has waited for rebuke and misery. They gave me gall for my food, and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Let us listen attentively. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. At that time, when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that he was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, 
he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him, on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he... But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single charge, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered Jesus up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him, and plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat upon him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. This man they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. One of the criminals who were were hanged railed at, at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now if he desires him, for he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, 
Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. And Jesus cried again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly this was the Son of God. Since it was the day of preparation in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall be broken. And again, another scripture says, they shall look on him whom they have pierced. There were also many women there looking on from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Father, When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting opposite the sepulchre. Glory to your forbearance, O Lord. Glory to you. Let us all say with all our soul and all our mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. 
We pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Again, we pray for all devout and orthodox Christians. Again, we pray for our Archbishop Yerasimus. Gospodi pomihiloi, Gospodi pomihiloi, Gospodi pomihiloi. Again we pray for our brethren, the priest, priest, monks, deacons, and monks, and all our brotherhood in Christ. Buona huru mihia, buona huru mihia, buona huru mihia. Again let us pray for the blessed memory and eternal rest of the founders of this holy church and for all our Orthodox fathers and brethren who piously lie here and everywhere. Senor ten piedad, Senor ten piedad, Senor ten piedad. Again we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, protection, forgiveness, and the remission of the sins of the servants of God, and for the parishioners, the council, the sus- subscribers and benefactors, of this holy church. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again let us pray for those who bring fruits of the earth and for those who do good works in this holy and sacred church, for those who serve and sing in it, and for those here present who anticipate your great and plenteous mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. For you are our God of mercy, love, and compassion, and to you we ascribe glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that we may be kept this evening without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and your name is praised and glorified through all the ages. Amen. Lord, let your mercy come upon us, for we have trusted in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, Master, grant me understanding of your statutes. Blessed are you, Holy One, enlighten me with your statutes. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not overlook the works of your own hands. To you, praise, worship, and glory are befitting the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless evening. Let us ask the Lord for an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask the Lord for the forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions. Let us ask the Lord for all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world. Let us ask the Lord that we may complete the remainder of our lives in peace and penitence. Let us ask the Lord for a Christian end to our lives peaceful without shame and suffering and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask the Lord commemorating our all holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Most holy Theotokos, save us. With all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For you are a merciful and loving God, and to you we ascribe glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. O Lord our God, 
who bowed the heavens and came down for the salvation of the human race. Look upon these, your servants, and your inheritance, for it is to you, the dread and merciful God, that they have bowed their heads and submissively inclined their necks, expecting not help from men, but your mercy, and anticipating salvation from you. Protect them at all times, both during this present evening and the coming night, from every adversary, from every action of power of the devil, and from vain thoughts and evil dreams. May the dominion of your kingdom be blessed and glorified of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and under the ages of ages. Amen. Please kneel. O when Joseph of Arimathea took you the life of all, now dead and down from the cross, he buried you in fine linen after anointing you with myrrh. He yearned with desire in heart and lips to embrace your pure body, but humbly contained by all rejoicing, he cried out to you, Glory to your condescension, O merciful God. <coughs> the Lord has reigned and clothed himself in comeliness. He has clothed and girded himself with power. When you, the Redeemer of all, were her placed in a new tomb for us all. It is the respecter of none. Crouch when he saw you. The bars were her broken. The gates were shattered. The graves were her open. And the dead arose, then Adam, gratefully rejoicing, cried out to you, O glory, to your condescension, O merciful o God. For he has edified the universe which cannot be moved. O te endotafos archikos, elon sin eclistis ofisi, itis theotihitos, menon aperigraptos, ea diohoristos, tathanatu apeclisas, tamia ke ahadu, Apanda heke nosas, Christe vasilihiam, Tote ketos avaton tuhuton, Theas evlogios kelvoxis, Etis islam rotitos ixiosas. Holiness becomes your house, O Lord, until length of days. When the heavenly powers saw you, O Christ, falsely slandered by the lawless as a deceiver and the stone of the tomb sealed by the hands of those who pierced your sacred side. They shuddered at your ineffable forbearance, yet rejoicing for our salvation, they cried out to you, glory, 
to your condescension, O merciful God. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. You who clothed yourself with light as a garment, Joseph with Nicodemus, brought down from the cross. And seeing you who dead, naked and unburied, felt deeply a sympathetic lament, and in grieving said, Woe to me, sweetest Jesus, whom but a short while ago, when the sun beheld you hanging on the cross, enshrouded itself in darkness, and the earth quaked in fear, and the veil of the temple was rent us a hundred. But lo, I now see that you willingly underwent death for my sake. How then shall I array you for burial, my God? Or how shall I wrap you within a shroud? And with what hands can I touch your sacred body? Or what dirges shall I chant for your funeral, O merciful one? I magnify your passion. I praise in him your burial with your resurrection, crying aloud, Lord, glory to you. Now let your servant depart in peace, O Master, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. Together, holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, pardon our sins. Master, forgive our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The noble Joseph, taking down from the cross your spotless body, and wrapped it, and wrapped it in clean linen with aromas, and laid it for burial in a new tomb. The angel standing by the tomb cried out to the myrrh-bearing women, the myrrh is fitting for the dead, but Christ has shown himself a stranger to corruption. Wisdom, blessed is he who is Christ our God, always, now, and forever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who for us all and for our salvation endured his awful passion, the cross, and condescended to voluntary entombment in the flesh. Christ, our true God, through the intercession of his most pure and holy mother, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, by the power of his precious and life-giving cross, 
the protection of all the angelic powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable, glorious prophet and forerunner, John the Baptist, the holy, glorious, and most praiseworthy apostles, especially St. Paul the Apostle, the holy, glorious, and victorious martyrs of our holy and God-bearing fathers, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, your Kim and Anna, and of all your saints, have mercy on us and save us as our good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of our Holy Father's Lord, Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save our lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated just for a moment. So normally this would be my time to take all the children that would be here after our Sunday school retreat and invite them to come up and experience the tomb of Christ and the epitaphios, the icon of the dead Christ, as well as the cross and the crown of thorns and the nails by which Christ was crucified. Today, unfortunately, I still cannot do that, but we will do that next year, for sure. I'm certain of it. So what I can ask you to do today is just simply to come forward uh, to venerate uh, the tomb of Christ, the epitaphios that's laid upon it, and then you can exit out that side door. One of the ushers will guide you out. God bless all of you for coming today. It is a dread and fearful day, but it's also a wonderful day because once Christ is laid in the tomb, he empties out all that had gone before us into Hades, and the beginning of the resurrection takes place. So you'll come forward reverently. Uh, this year we ask you please not to kiss the actual epitaphio, but you may venerate it. Then you'll exit to the side where Leo is. He'll open that stanchion there. We ask you, of course, please do not congregate either inside or outside, but with reverence to return to your cars. This evening, the Lamentation Service, 7 p.m. Tomorrow morning, the Liturgy of St. Basil, 10 a.m. And then tomorrow evening, 9.30 p.m., the Canon for the Resurrection Service again at 10 p.m., not midnight, 10 p.m. tomorrow oh, evening. Thank sorry. you. I didn't see those. That's okay. Thank you.